If all the world's a can opener, then would there be Cheerios? What is up, everybody? Is it Michaela here? And that intro was random. All over the internet, there are things that are claiming to be truly random. But underneath a lot of those mechanisms are algorithms, patterns, and instructions to take a set of input data, jumble it up, and give you what appears to be a random output point. I came up with this video idea because I saw some advertisements for what are called dice towers. Dice towers are basically boxes with a bunch of slants going all the way down. Uh, you throw the dice in them, they trickle down like pebbles, they get all jumbled up and randomized, and then they get spit out. These dice towers are always advertised uh, that will give to give these dice towers are always advertised to give your dice a truly random number every single time. My question is, how random is rolling dice the normal way? And is adding a dice tower even worth it? For that matter, what does it take to get a consistent roll of the dice? All of these questions deal with how randomness occurs. Randomness is essentially the concept of taking a set of inputs and their outputs being unpredictable. But the interesting thing about this type of random number generation is that with enough information about your system and with enough computing power, you could calculate exactly how you need to throw the dice to get the same number every time. Of course, because humans are imperfect and you can't really throw consistently at all, that's really difficult. Besides algorithms, the way that things in the real world appear random is due to what's called error propagation. Essentially, this takes small variations in your input. The way you throw the dice, how fast you throw the dice, how hard you throw the dice, what side is facing up when it hits the table. It takes all of these random inputs and propagates the error wildly. What this means is basically the dice are super bouncy. So the first question we want to answer is how intrinsically random is a dice? Well, we're scientists, so time to experiment. So the way we're gonna do this is pretty simple. There's gonna be three experiments that we're going to run. We're going to use one dice that has square edges and one dice that has rounded edges. We're gonna take the square dice and throw it two different ways. The first time is going to be as controlled as humanly possible, so long as a human is actually throwing it. We're gonna make sure the dice is placed on our palm in the same direction every single time. In this case, we want the number one to be facing up and four to be facing towards me. We're going to go a couple of inches up from the table and drop it just like that and record the result. We're going to do this 100 times. Next up, we're going to shuffle it, which means that we're just gonna do this before we give our toss. This will examine if throwing the dice is truly random or if the random event was actually the shuffle to get it facing and oriented a different way. Lastly, we're going to do a random shuffle technique on the rounded dice and see if there's an actual statistical difference between square and rounded dice. So let's start throwing some dice. You know, sometimes science is building bioreactors and sometimes it's rolling dice. It's about the journey, you know? Okay, so we calculated the data, made up all the graphs, and we have some pretty cool results actually. Here are the plots of both of our trials with the single dice. Now, a great way to tell if something is random is to get the average of all of your rolls. If the average of all your rolls is equal to the halfway point between the minimum and maximum value on the dice, one and six, that means that your results are most likely uniformly distributed and there's no bias towards any one number. The halfway value between one and six is three and a half. So all we had to do was calculate the average of our 100 rolls, as well as the standard deviation. If 3.5 was within the confidence limits of those values, we can say that numerically speaking for our small experiment, this dice is actually random. And that's exactly what we found. By both tipping it and rolling it, we found that they both had almost the same average value. This is really good news uh, because this is actually showing that even throwing them in the simplest way, making sure that the same number was facing up each time 
was enough to get a completely random result when we dropped it on the table. This is due to the super bouncy nature of the dice and the imperfections in the height that we dropped it, the speed that we dropped it, and just regular human error. We also found that rolling the round corner dice has no difference when compared to the sharp corner dice. A lot of times round corner dices tend to roll more and are said to be more random than the rigid dice. That might theoretically be true, but according to our test, for all intents and purposes, the distribution is exactly the same. But I'm not done yet. There's still more math to do because now I'm curious, what happens if we make a machine that rolls the dice at exactly the same height, exactly the same speed, and exactly the same orientation every single time? With an Arduino and a servo, it's super easy. I'm gonna just whip that up for you guys, and uh, we're gonna do one more experiment. Okay, so we did it. As you can see, we have a servo attached to a little Lego contraption I made to hold the dice. So at three seconds, it's going to rotate from 90 degrees uh, tilted down, and then the dice is going to fall, and we are going to track the value, like so. See, super easy. So we're gonna repeat this experiment one more time. This is a completely automated, the height is not changing, the velocity is not changing. We're gonna make sure the dice is also facing the same way every single time. If we can still get a random distribution from this, our hands are so random, we don't need dice towers at all. Y'all don't have to worry about your dice not being random. So I'm really excited to see what we'll find from this. So uh, run one more experiment. All right, guys, so I'm actively blown away. We made a device that drops it from the exact same height, speed, and orientation on the same surface, time after time after time, with no changes. It's the Arduino, it's fastened, it's a machine. It's probably about as low error as we can get. And yet, we still saw a completely random distribution of numbers. This data that you see right here was pulled from those current runs. And you can see that there's no huge spike, no series of numbers that are significantly higher than the other. And furthermore, the average value for all of these runs was like 3.43. That is well within the 95% limits of the true average, which would be a 3.5 out of all the numbers rolled. So the only conclusion I can draw from all of these studies is that it doesn't matter how you throw the dice. If it's on a reasonably hard surface and you just tip it, there is so much stochasticity and randomness inherent in these things when you drop them that you don't need a dice tower. You don't need to spend money to specially randomize your dice. If you wanna buy a dice tower because it looks cool, that's one thing. But according to all the data that I got out of all four of our trials, two with small dice, two with the large dice, I'm seeing random distributions on every single one. The tiniest effect, wind hitting it tiny millimeter differently can give us a completely different value. This is a really cool experiment to run and I hope that you guys learned a little bit. So I'll see you later.